Hello, this is just a quick follow-up video of the uh, wave twister thing that I made. And uh, I didn't really do any of the audio type manipulation with this because it didn't sound that great, to be quite honest with you. It was fine mixing control voltage signals and things, but when it came to audio, it kind of lacked, in a way, lacked uh, what I was hoping to do. However, in uh, this video, I'm just going to show you a couple of little examples using audio and showing you that, uh, I don't know, maybe it's useful, maybe it's not that great. So, let me show you where I am. Basically, what I've got coming into this at the moment, in A, I've got a sine wave, and in B, I've got a sine wave. Start off nice and simple. And uh, because one is slightly off from the other, I'm getting this sort of pattern and that just sounds like this it's just got a, a very smooth transition from one to the other uh, if I bring in a bit more of A B is full up a little bit more of A and you can just kind of hear when it goes over that peak, it has a little bit of uh, harmonic, I don't know, something like that. There's a little bit of sound. There's a, it, it, it's making a, a slightly different sound. Uh, but it's only two sine waves that are slightly off from each other. Because if I start changing the actual tuning of one of them, you get exactly what you would expect. That sort of beat, beating sound that's going off. So yeah, nothing too exciting there. Uh, go up down the scale a little bit. There's the pure sine wave. And there's the sine wave being mixed with a second sine wave. Which is wider. So. If I you can see basically that is one small sine wave being controlled by a larger sine wave and you can sort of make that bigger make this smaller take it down to zero until it just becomes the sine wave again so yeah you're just adding the two together and making little patterns but uh, musically, not that great. Okay, so I'll move on to how's about mixing a sine wave with a triangle. So there's just the sine wave on B, and add a bit of the triangle. Now. It only really gets interesting when, when you're playing about with the tuning and you kind of got these little offset sounds between them. Or... Let's swap that around. So there you can hear a little something happening, but musically, mm. yeah, it's been modulated uh, as I expect, but like I said, it, it doesn't, doesn't sound that great. It looks pretty, but it doesn't sound pretty. So let me just actually play a, a little collect, a collection of notes. See what I can do.
and I'll change that for I'm going to change the sine wave for pulse width instead so I'm going to have a, a pulse width and a triangle hmm. now it's sounding a little bit better change the uh, pulse width And of course you can flip the pulse width upside down. Give it a little bit of bias. But in audio terms that doesn't really do much. Flip it to AC. Uh, that was a good invention, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so, so I've been playing about with uh, a few different mixtures of uh, like uh, sine waves with uh, pulse width modulation and things. And you do find these little sweet spots occasionally, every now and again, that, that you kind of think, oh, that, that, that sounds nice. It sounds almost like a, a drone that's going along. Uh, but of course, as soon as you change a note, a, a CV, an actual note that goes into it, it, it changes it all altogether. So you're basically tuning it for every note that you're playing. So if I just stick on a G, it doesn't sound like a G, but Okay, so I'll hold that little pattern, uh, and then when you change the notes, yeah, uh, th th there's a bit of modulation happening. Uh, it's okay, but uh, like I say, I mean that you you can already do in a way by going into your mixers and bits and pieces and yeah if you can in inverse the actual output and things like that uh, yeah and get different ki kind of sounds working but uh, like I say for audio it it's not really that great it's, it's much better for control voltages than audio but I'll just try one more thing uh, unfortunately this this top VCO it won't work on the sawtooth or the actual square waves or the pulse width. It only has the triangle and the sine wave on it. It's one of those things that I've got to fix one day. I'll get around to it type of thing. So I'm going to go back to two triangles because I kind of found that the two triangles sounded best. I got the best sort of sounds out of it.
you can just hear a little bit of sort of phasing occasionally when you when you get these all just right you just hear a little bit of phasing kind of happening well let's try the difference anyway see if that makes any different difference different yeah now this is supposed to really be taking one from the other and giving you the uh, the result so if you put in two perfect triangles they should cancel each other out so this is where you get into making things that look like it's wave folding but it actually isn't wave folding I'll try and show you what I mean These, these kind of sounds that look like pyramids in a way, they sound better higher up. But yeah, uh, it's not that interesting really. Uh, I think I should have called this the CV twister rather than the wave twister, even though CV is a wave in a kind of way anyway, especially when it's in motion. But it does modulate. It does modulate the actual. Uh, so yeah, if you like those kind of drones, yeah, be fine. But other than that, yeah, I just thought I'd do a, a quick little short video and just show you uh, why I said in the previous video that it, it wasn't that great with analog and basically that, that's the reason why. So I uh, hope you like this video and I'm moving on to the next project pretty soon. I'm not sure what I'm going to do next, but uh, it'll be something you're right. you know, try and make another module that will do something. Uh, soon. All the best. Thank you very much for watching. All the best. Bye-bye.